Hey guys, and welcome to a battle featuring the mighty and bold forces of the Lizardmen, led by myself, up against Kit Annie and his Skaven forces. A old school grudge match. Unfortunately, there is no Tehenna win here, but we'll be trying our best to represent Sotek and you know, pull apart those skinny rat boys. Anyway, for our build, you can see we have gone incredibly disgustingly wide here, which is the best way to go as you really need to swarm the Skaven forces where possible. We have Skink Cohorts, coupled with Chevrons mixed in with Red Crested Skink, slotted all the way along the battle line, including the Cohort of Sotek, Regiment of Renowned Red Crested Skinks, who can refuse to die, and also look incredibly cool in the uh, package there, so... Certainly a nice addition to the force. So going very wide, we also have Skink Skirmishers up front because I had some leftover funds just a bit annoying and kind of trade and waste the ammunition of enemy skirmishers. In the secondary battle line, we have gone for a prefla of Croxgores. One, two, three units of these bad boys. They get in there. They can tear through infantry very quickly and they have decent mass, decent AP, so they can even do good damage up against Doom Whales, Doom Flayers, any of the nasty beasties, rat ogres and the like that Skaven often do bring in this matchup. To back them up, we do have a couple units of Cold One Riders, one on either flank to be precise. Just the basic ones, no spears needed here. Once again, going for as a wide build as possible. These guys are a little bit cheaper, still do relatively well up against some of the larger targets, and as well can uh, get into the back line and help swarm. We do have one unit of the Razor Hunting Packs, the best of the spiky doggos, and these guys look Awesome, I say this every single time I get to play with them. They have some of the best models in the game easily. Look how badass they look. And these guys are bringing a much needed AP to the battlefield. One problem I can come up against here against Skaven as Lizmen is help at abominations, masses of rat ogres, and other kind of large entities that such a swarm build can struggle against. So they're going to be here just to uh, give the spikes to those Skaven boys and uh, yeah, help peel down the enemy as much as possible. For a mage, we do have a Skink Priest of Beast coming with Amber Spear, which may seem like an odd pick, but it's here to destroy artillery pieces. And we also have a Manticore Summon as well, fantastic at going after enemy lords and heroes. And for our lord, hiding behind some trees at the moment, we do have a Saurus Old Blood, and he's going to be on top of a mighty Carnosaur. So no Grimlock, unfortunately, this time, but still, stand your ground, as well as Annuals of Itzel makes him relatively tanky. Also has Foe Seeker as well, and he can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with all of the Skaven Lords. Now for my opponent, go for a very defensive build, which is what you expect from Skaven quite often. He has some Gutter Runners up front with Poison, and then for the main part, he has Skaven Slave Spears dotted all around. We do also have Clan Vulcan Tail Slashers, the Beric Dundarians of the Skaven world, who come in with some nifty shields and flaming swords. So not going too uh, kind of heavy, I suppose, on the infantry count, or at least frontline infantry. We have Clan Rats with Spears kind of dotted around, but it's got a little bit more elite in the centre pocket. We have a couple of Warp Grinders to try and hold me in, to pin me in place and allow the rest of his army to do the damage. Looks like they are going to be teaming up with some poisoned wind glue deers. Nice combination there as the warp grinders should be able to pin the enemies in place and allow these guys to do some huge burst damage. In the center pocket, it looks like we have double Warplock Gisales, one of which is the Natty Bobu Sharpshooters, one of the coolest names in the game, and can do huge damage to both large dinosaurs and characters alike. We do have Itix Zap Zap Warp Lightning Cannon, which uh, its name says it all really. Very powerful, big old fat cannon. And then we have Ratogos dotted all over the place. So it looks like two on the left hand flank and one on this right hand side. Ratogos very good and pivotal in all in uh, most Skaven builds. Very good to use as backline defence to counter enemy cav and units whipping around the flanks. For Lordship, we do have Lord Skrulk, the most disgusting of all the rats, which is certainly saying something. Bring in the Lever Bubonicus, as well as the Rod of Corruption. He, of course, comes in with Pestilent Breath and... Um, ooh, what's that? Is that Double Pestilent Breath? Oh, Peasant's Birth and Peasant's Breath, and also Vermin Tide, which he's certainly going to need to summon some of those uh, Skaven Slaves and the like to try and pin in my forces. We certainly will be able to amass around his relatively light uh, infantry front line. And here we go. So you see Skink Skirmishers taking a bit of a hammering straight out of the gate. And I'm actually getting a bit over eager here trying to get some shots on Lord Skrulk has driven us into combat. So we're going to have to fall back as quickly as possible. Looks like it takes a zap zap. It's going after the Cold One Riders. Not a bad idea at all. But as you can see from my build, it is an absolute threat overload. My opponent uh, is mainly going to be focusing on range to do his damage output. And he needs to target down double Cold Riders, triple Crocosagore, a Saurus Old Blood plus... Uh, Razor Dons is really quite tough here. 
to uh, pin all my people in that place. Cohort of Sotek have popped refused to die as they take a bit of a hammering on the way in, but they now are engaged with Skaven slaves as well as warp grinders. She better grind film relatively quickly here. Our cavalry has taken a bit of a beating, but it is going to be charging some rat ogres and croxagors running over to support as well. I can see we have a summon of plague monks in the centre pocket. It's going to be quite useful for tearing through my Red Crosses skinks who are trying to push into the back line as desperately as possible. As you can see, the Rage Dogs have pushed up now and they're going to be assisting this big blob engagement. Focus firing down the Rat Ogres. You can see their leadership is going down quite heavily here. And with a mixture of Cold and Rise and Croc scores in here, we should be able to push through relatively effectively. Even the Feral Man score is jumping in in the action, trying to force Lord Scroll back and away from the main engagement. Over on the left hand side, you can see some skin cohorts have managed to sneak their way past some rat ogres before forcing their way back onto the warp block Giselles. And on the right hand flank, things are going to get a little worse for me. I thought I'd manage to get the jump on these rat ogres, pinning them in place with cold and riders and croxagore, but due to the missile support of the natty bobu sharpshooters, we're actually losing this engagement, which is really bad kind of cost return for us as we've sunk a ton of units into this section of the battlefield. However, the centre is going a little bit better, still a bit sketchy, as Croxcore continue to pile in. Source Old Love is trying to assassinate uh, Lord Stroke at this point, but he's been a very crafty rat, managing to escape, as well as uh, pop down for more summons in the team to flee into. Looks like our first Feromance Squad is about to disappear, but he's helping to finish off some Rat Ogres, which is a pretty good target. Raised on a hunting pack as well, filling their backs with spikes as the Rat Ogres desperately try to retreat. The Raised on have done very good so far, only 8 kills, but they've been focused on Rat Ogres the entire time. Looks like the Poison Wind Globe Deers are about to receive a Padman of a Lifetime. In come the Crocs go, plus some Cold One Warriors, going to be shutting these guys down very, very quickly as they get flung to the ground there. In the back line, we are trying to shut down Itik's Zap Zap Cannon, as it has been pretty much unharassed all game. So Feral Manscore has popped on there, hopefully to destroy a few of the models. My opponent is now kind of drawing back into a second battle line, which I quite like a lot. Pinning in my chasing troops with some warp grinders, allowing the Natty Bobu sharpshooters as well as the Poison Wing Globideers to try and rally around Itik's Zap Zap Cannon and uh, make a secondary fire base to assist in the front line, as it's getting very hairy for both forces here. Raised on once again, focusing down the large threat of the Rat Ogres, although it looks like Clan Vulcan Tail Slashes are popping in, so we are going to have to retreat relatively soon. Stand Ground has been popped on them to keep them in the action. As you can see, Cold and Rise and Croxmore pushing now through that centre pocket and hopping on top of the Warp Log Giselles, as well as the Skaven Slave Slingers, trying to shut down as many units in one go as possible, and at the same time grind through the Rat Ogres with slow and uh, steady attrition. Looks like some of the common rights have been pushed back. Rattoga play has been very on point by my opponent, actually, doing some lovely counter charges throughout. It looks like the Itix Zap Zap is offline for now, and only one model does remain of the artillery pieces. However, Matty Bobu sharpshooters are online and active. Luckily for me, a few of my units which did kind of flee have come back to the fray. We're going to pick off enemy targets as well as swoop into the back line here to try and shut down the enemy. Incredibly close game so far. Balance power is dead even. We did manage to drag out the clan of Vulcan Tel slashes before counter charging with the Razadons with the support as well of some skink skirmishers. The Razadons have pretty decent melee stats all round and they feasted quite happily. Up to 33 kills on key targets have been really impressed with their performance so far. Saurus Old Blood is hunting down Rat Ogres now and is incredibly healthy. My opponent instead decided to focus down Croxagore and Cold One Riders with his ranged troops, which is certainly a viable tactic, trying to take away uh, kind of a huge amount of my mobility. If I just have the Saurus Old Blood left, he can only be in so many places in one go. You can pull away, kite him, and drag him down. But if there's a ton of Croxagore and Cold Ones dotted around, it's much harder to protect your ranged troops. So I, I approve of his kind of targeting priorities here. Source Old Blood is going to be going straight after Lord Scroll, trying to finish him down as he is uh, now getting filled with spikes as well. Although the Source Old Blood does kind of fling him towards the Razor Bombs here. And Lord Scroll is now taking a bit of a beating, but his uh, melee defense has been on point today. And with a stand ground popped, he's been certainly quite tricky to take down. Razor Dons do rampage into Glorious Combat, but we're going to calm them down with a cold blooded try to pull back before turning and engaging once more. Looks like the Croc score finally gets the upper hand over the Rat Ogres and pushing them back. And we have a couple of units of Croc score here now who can dance into the back line, trying to shut down these troops. 
in the distance, Crocscore and Skink Skirmishers have been hit by a Warp Quake here, but they've done their job for the most part. Natty Bobu Sharpshooters are running for the hills at this point, and uh, we need to kind of try to capitalise as much as possible, as the balance of power does go in our favour for the first time in the battle here. As you can see, a ton of uh, Slingers are focused down the Crocscore, who are just chilling at the moment, catching their breath as I'm probably focused elsewhere, trying to desperately assassinate Lord Skrull. He's been an absolute menace to try and kill. Uh, he keeps uh, cackling and kind of darting between his own units to escape. And all the while, the Source of Old Blood is taking more and more damage here, but it looks like we have managed to isolate him at least for a second. In the back lines, we do have Red Crested Skinks, who are now reaving through the backfield. Managed to shatter some Rat Ogres before now starting the Long March over to the Poisoned Wind and Natty Bobus, trying to shut down that long range where possible. I wonder who the uh, Sharp Kings are actually currently targeting. Looks like they may be facing the wrong way, unfortunately, for my opponent as they do it once again rally. Looks like the Poisoned Wind Globedeers do have a nice little fire knock now as they can shoot in. Looks like they're trying desperately to focus down the Croxagore. They have managed to fend them off as well. Skink Priest has come in to, for the tag team here, trying to surround Lord Stroke, at least distract some of his attacks. And you know, getting a little bit of damage, he's still a hero at the end of the day. Some summoned clan rats are trying to swamp in and save the day, and it looks like a lot of my leadership is broken. And at this point of the game, I was really worried. You can see uh, both my characters nearly break here, and the rest of my forces is currently running for the hills. If my opponent can then chase off my troops, I'm pretty much doomed for. But luckily, we do have a bit of a resurgence here and rally. The skink priest is forced off, but the source of old blood does get a cold blooded popped on him, boosting up his leadership and keeping him in the action. He focuses down at the rat ogres, manages to finish those guys off. And uh, Lord Scroke, your pestilent booty is next. And uh, in comes the Soros Old Blood. Can you take a nice little stab at Scroke? Hits him to the ground. And uh, take that uh, Grimlock wannabe is going to be feasting tonight. However, Clan Vulcan Tail Slashes do come in, as well as a ton of Clan Rat Spears trying to focus down the Old Blood, who is below 2,000 hit points at this point. It looks like he finally manages to take a large enough chunk out of Scroke to terrify him, force him off, and shatter my opponent. Very well played to the Skaven player, however, all we had left was some Red Quester Skinks on the right hand side, a very beat up Saurus Old Blood, a Skink Priest and a couple of Croxagore. It's an incredibly Pyrrhic victory at the end of the day. As I said before, well played to Kit Annie there, probably butchering your name, I do apologise, but I like the build, I think it's a pretty classic Skaven style of play here, but I do like the combination here of the Warp Grinders and the Poisoned Wind Globedeers. I think the Warp Grinders just needed to get a little bit further ahead. And that's the second time I've seen Warp Grinders in recent weeks used as this kind of brilliant supporting role. We saw them with Eshin Triads before, this time with the uh, Bombardiers or Globedeers, sorry. But overall, yeah, pretty standard stuff. Warp Lord Giselles and a Itic Zap Zap and then a load of Wrath Ogres to protect with a bit of more interest in the middle package. Now, for my own force, this is a pretty standard build I like to take. Going incredibly wide up against the forces of Skaven uh, can go pretty well. I'm experimenting a little bit more with Razor Dons these days. I'm a massive fan of Salamanders. I'm sure some of you know who have followed the channel before. And the Umbral Tide in particular are one of my favourite units in the game. And I'm trying out Razor Dons in all sorts of matchups to see where they you know, have a little bit of an edge over their fire-breathing brethren. And in this matchup, I think Salamander's probably still best. I brought the Razor Dawns to help deal with Rat Ogres as well as help at Abominations, but I think the Salamanders, with their fire damage, especially helping up against the Hellpit's regeneration, I think they're slightly more viable still in this matchup, but regardless, the Razor Dawns did some really good work here. Only 34 kills, which doesn't seem a lot, but they did massive damage, consistent damage to those Rat Ogres over the course of the battle, helped pin down Skrulk as well at one point but uh, yeah bringing down the rat ogres as they were one of the biggest threats to my force able to go toe to toe with the croc score cold on riders and easily stomp all the skinks to death anyway guys hope you did enjoy if you did feel free to give the video a big old thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already it uh, really helps kind of boost up the channel get it out to as many people as possible and youtube can become one of the duck clan now, I've been receiving a load of replays recently. I have one or two more games for myself I'm probably going to cast, and then we're back onto the replays. If you do want to see them featured up on the channel, feel free to join my Discord. There's a link in the description down below, as well as other links to how you can support the channel. Anyway, guys, until next time, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.